Okay, hello. In this screencast, we will solve this problem, which is number 12. Calculate the metric and conjugate metric components for the oblique coordinate, cylindrical coordinates of r, phi, and eta, where x is r cos phi, y is r sine phi plus eta cos alpha, and z is eta sine alpha. Alpha is a parameter going from 0 to pi over 2. And they say when alpha equals pi over 2, we basically have cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so let's take a look now at the equations we will use. And they are here. We're going to basically use three equations, R, EI, and GIJ. R is basically your transformation from the X, Y, Z coordinate system to U, V, W. You may also use the notation X bar, uh, bar and unbarred notation for your transformation equations, but we'll use X, Y, Z since that's how the problem is. EI is your natural basis vector, which is a vector that's not necessarily a unit vector, and the EI vectors are not necessarily orthogonal. And GIJ is exactly what we're looking for, which is the metric tensor. And this problem, I and J, are our free indices. As we note, they appear on both sides of the equation. And there is, I goes from 1 to 3, and J goes from 1 to 3. So we will have a total of 9 equations. I have another YouTube video on that, describing that, if you want to... Um, get a, a more thorough explanation of how to derive or how to use the table function when you see ij as free indices okay so now let's open mathematica first we'll define our r vector and we will define it to equal exactly how the problem appears, which is using this r cos theta r sine phi plus eta sine alpha and z equals eta sine alpha. So we have r times cos of phi. Gamma r times sine of phi plus eta times uh, cos alpha. Comma, and the z component is simply eta sine alpha. Okay. Now let's just define a var list here, which equals your three variables are phi and eta okay now let's define the E matrix which will hold your natural basis vectors and now we will use our table function uh, just there's another YouTube video I described how to use the table function so we will s oh, it is table the derivative of the R vector subscript J and we will differentiate with respect to var list subscript I where i and j go from 1 to 3. OK, 
okay I need to close the D function or the derivative operator and uh, it looks like I'm missing something here Oh, here, this is lowercase l. Let's change it to capital L. Okay. Now we will define the metric tensor variable. And we will call it, again, a table. Subscript g i comma j and then i going from one to three and j going from one to three here i'm just initializing this metric tensor now if we want to look at this in matrix form we use this notation Next, I'll use the nested for loop to uh, fill in the values of the metric tensor matrix that I previously defined. So it will be i equals 1, i less than 4, i plus plus. And now the argument of the for loop will be another for loop, j equal 1, oh, sorry, another for loop, j equal 1, uh, j less than 4, j plus plus. Now I'll use metric tensor of i comma j is equal to we will use the third equation in here, which is this one, ei dot ej simply means the i, or let's say i equals 1 and j equals 2, it would be e1 dotted with e2. So here we say e matrix of i dotted with E matrix of J and then uh, close our function which is this is the first for loop and this is the second for loop and now let's run it so now let's take a look at the metric tensor after we uh, define the components using the nested for loop and now we can also simplify we know that this can be simplified to r squared because cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 over phi I mean not theta phi so we'll use the full simplify function and, um, and there it is Okay, and now why don't we evaluate the metric tensor when alpha equals pi over 2 using the replace function. So we can use the cylindrical, let's call it coordinate metric tensor. And we equal our metric tensor. And then the divide dot, well, the divide sign dot, it's not, div you're not dividing anything. This is actually a mathematical replace function, alpha. And I will replace it by pi over 2. And then we get the cylindrical coordinate metric tensor, which we know is equal to 1 r squared 1 across the diagonal. So to look at that in matrix form, and 
and um, that's the end of this tutorial. So basically we calculated the metric tensor using Mathematica and applying these three simple equations. And then you can calculate the metric tensor for any coordinate system by using this same code. All you would have to do is change your transformation equations and your variables. So let's say we want to do it for the spherical coordinate system, which is rho times what was the spherical coordinate system? Rho theta phi. Here are the spherical coordinate system equation, transformation equations. So rho times the sine of theta times cos phi and then the y term is rho sine theta sine phi And the z is simply rho cos theta. And now let's change these to rho theta and phi as shown here. Rho theta and phi. And then let's run it. And as expected, we get this is no longer needed here. As expected, we get one rho squared, rho squared, sine squared theta. Okay, that's the end of this YouTube. Thank you for watching.